Marcus Messiah Garvey was born on August 17, 1887 in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. He was a political activist, orator, publisher, entrepreneur, and journalist. His parents had 11 children, however, Marcus and his sister, Indiana, were the only ones that lived to be adults. Marcus Garvey married twice, and both of the women that he married played prominent roles in black and women's rights movements. Ironically, both of their names were also Amy. His second wife, Amy Jacques Garvey, went on to teach people about Marcus Garvey after he passed. They had two sons, Marcus and Julius Garvey. Marcus Garvey traveled to and worked in many different parts of Central America. He ended up relocating to England in 1912 and he studied at Birkbeck College. He then started working at the offices of the African Times and the Orient Review Journal. They were both the first political papers produced by and for African people in Great Britain. Marcus Garvey returned to Jamaica in July of 1914. He then created the United Negro Improvement Association. He also created the African Communities League in August of 1914. The first division of the UNIA was formed in New York City in May of 1917. The organization aimed to achieve black nationalism through the celebration of African culture and history. Garvey also pushed the Back to Africa movement. He also created the Black Star Line, which was a black owned passenger ship that was to carry people back and forth to Africa. The UNIA had two million members all over the United States. By 1920, the UNIA had 1,100 chapters in 40 different countries, such as the UK, Cuba, Panama, Costa Rica, and Ghana. By 1926, the amount of members grew to 11 million. Marcus Garvey had built the largest African organization in history. Marcus Garvey also fostered shopping malls and restaurants to encourage black economic independence. He was extremely outspoken and he deemed himself the president of Africa, unfortunately without consulting with other leaders in Africa. In 1918, Marcus Garvey and the UNIA created the Negro World after his first newspaper failed. It went from being a weekly to being a worldwide paper phenomenon. This paper ended up circulating to over 200,000 people. It featured reports from the UNIA, poetry excerpts, literature, a women's page, and commentary on global African events. The paper was available in Spanish, English, and French. Colonizers feared the Negro world due to its powerful effects, and it was banned in countries like Belize, Trinidad, Guyana, Jamaica, and a plethora of other African countries. Garvey and many other African activists were inspired by the Irish movement for independence from English rule, hence them naming the UNIA headquarters Liberty Hall after Liberty Hall in Dublin, Ireland. Dublin was the capital of the Irish Revolution. Garvey held meetings in Liberty Hall that included up to 6,000 people at a time. The UNIA also held meetings at NYC's Madison Square Garden. 25,000 people from all over the world gathered at that convention, including delegations from 25 African countries. At this convention, the Declaration of the Rights of the Negro People of the World was adopted. It was one of the earliest documents advocating human rights and detailing abuse against African people worldwide. The document demanded condemnation of the world the freedom of Africa for Negro people of the world, no taxation without representation, equal treatment under the law, the condemnation of segregation and lynchings, and that the word Negro be spelled with a capital N. The UNIA's first commercial venture, the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation, was launched in New York City in 1919. The goal of this corporation was to establish an efficient mode of transport, communication, and trade amongst Africans worldwide, as well as to enhance the image and pride in African communities. The corporation sold stock shares to the public at $5 per share for support. The corporation's first ship was named the SS Yarmouth. It was later renamed to the SS Frederick Douglass. Marcus Garvey was highly inspired by Frederick Douglass. It sailed for three years between the West Indies and the U.S., and it was the first passenger ship with an all-black crew and a black captain. In 1920, Marcus Garvey established the Negro Factory Corporation. 
Within this corporation, he was able to sell shares of stock and he raised over $1 million. Garvey's goal was to produce everything that a nation needed so that Africans can rely completely on themselves. His corporations provided jobs and generated income that would help better the black economy. It included a chain of grocery stores, restaurants, laundry and tailor shops, stores for clothing and fashion, as well as a publishing house and a doll factory. Garvey owned a plethora of businesses in New York City. He had a fleet of trucks and he had over 1,000 African people working for him. He also operated the Phyllis Wheatley Hotel. The UNIA's goal was to create a United States of Africa, and Liberia was the intended location. Garvey's success in his endeavors ultimately attracted enemies, such as J. Edgar Hoover and W.E.B. Du Bois, ironically. It's obvious why Hoover didn't like him, but Du Bois being an integrationist that did not support a separate black state or repatriation was opposed to Garvey's movements. He also did not like Garvey's association with the KKK or his belief in black racial purity. Garvey supported the Greater Liberia Act by known white supremacist Theodore Bilbodo. Theodore's intention was to move all African Americans back to Africa. Their connection was more practical and strategic than it was social. Du Bois and a few other NAACP members organized the Garvey Must Go campaign and collaborated with the U.S. government to have Garvey deported. The FBI established the Cointel Pro program to expose, neutralize, corrupt, and discredit the movements of black nationalists. Their ultimate goal was to prevent the rise of a black leader or messiah, as well as a black race as a whole. In 1919, Hoover hired a black agent to infiltrate the UNIA. This wouldn't be the last time that this was done. This was also the case with the Black Panthers. In 1923, Garvey's transport company went bankrupt. Garvey was convicted of mail fraud. He was sentenced to two years in prison and was deported at the completion of his term. In less than two years of being back in Jamaica, Garvey launched the PPP, the People Political Party. PPP was Jamaica's first modern political party and the first to protect the black majority. It demanded a minimum wage, land reform, a government-ran electrical system, public schools and libraries, a Jamaican university, representation in the British Parliament, judicial reforms, and more. After his deportation, Garvey tried to rebuild the international influence of the UNIA. He therefore moved to London in March of 1935. He then continued to travel and speak consistently and extensively. Garvey had a stroke in January of 1940 that left him paralyzed. A few months later, in June of 1940, he suffered from multiple strokes, which unfortunately led to his passing. Marcus Garvey died in London. His legacy continues to inspire people all throughout the diaspora. He became Jamaica's first national hero and the prophet of the Rastafarian religion. Marcus Garvey inspired many people like Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, Bob Marley, Dr. King, Kwame Nkrumah, the Black Panthers, and countless others.